Hi, my name is Mike from SideFX, and today we'll be going over the box node. So let's drop down a geometry container and jump inside and give ourselves a box. Now as soon as we place this down, you can see that it spawns a box in a viewport according to the values of these parameters over here on the right. You're able to control exactly how the box is being generated up here at the top with this primitive type attribute or parameter. And if we click this drop down menu, you can see that we're given some options, but more on those later. For now, we can stick with polygons. The consolidate corner points parameter that you'll find right below that merges all of the points on each of the corners in your box. It's on by default, and so if we turn on the point counts, you can see that we only have singular points at each of the corners of our boxes. But if we turn it off, now each of these faces has its own unique corner point, which results in three overlapping points at the corners of the box. So turn this on, and you can see it snaps back to one point per corner. Underneath that, the size parameter lets you control the size of the box along each of the given axes. So along the X, the Y, and the Z, allowing you to dial in the size of your box. You can set that back to default and move on to the center parameter, which controls where the center of your box will be. You can see as we move this positive X, the box moves appropriately. And same with positive Y. So this effectively allows you to transform your box through the viewport. Next is the rotate parameter, which, as the name would suggest, allows you to rotate your box. It is important to note that the centroid of these rotations will always be the centroid of your box. Changing the center does not change the pivot. The next parameter is the uniform scale parameter, which, unlike the size parameter, lets you scale your box in all three axes uniformly. The last available parameter is the divisions parameter. And if we check this on, you can see that we're able to generate our box out of polylines rather than polygons. And the amount of lines that are being generated are controlled by this divisions parameter here. So as we, as we increase the number of divisions along the x-axis, you can see that the number of lines increases as well. All right, and so that's what's happening there. The enforcement bars parameters, let's actually set this back to default, tells Houdini to draw diagonal lines between all of the points in your box. But this is only available when your divisions parameter is turned on. And so if we turn this on as well, you can now see that we have a lattice of lines going all through our box. So that's what that does. If we turn this off, you can see that we expose another parameter called add vertex normals. And so this may be a bit confusing because if we turn on the visualize normals button, you can see that Houdini already thinks that we have normals on our box. That's what these green lines represent. But if we middle mouse click on our box proper, you can see that in our attributes that we don't actually have any normal attributes. And so right now these normals are implicit. So if we check add vertex normals, nothing changes in the viewport, but if we middle mouse click our box again, you can now see that we have a vertex attribute that gives us access to our normal values. And so now these normals are explicit and can be accessed by you at any time. So turn this off. And you also might have noticed that some of these parameters remained grayed out, and that's because some of them are only available depending on the primitive type you select. And so as we move down to polygon mesh or just regular mesh, you can see that we get access to this axis divisions parameter as well as this connectivity parameter. So we can turn off the normal visualizer for now, and if we control the connectivity parameter, it just gives us additional control over how the box is being generated. So we're able to only generate the rows of the box, as you can see here, and as we play with these values, you can see that the number of rows increases. We can also generate the columns and the rows and the columns all together and control those like this. Past that, there is triangles, which simply generates your box out of triangles rather than quads, the default quadrilaterals, the alternating triangles, which just generates, or rather alternates between the triangles and the reverse triangles, and the reverse triangles. And so these two are just opposites of each other. Or, there we go. And so that's what's going on in the connectivity parameter. The axis divisions functions much like the divisions parameter that's only available when your primitive type is set to polygon, but it still allows you to keep those polygons rather than forcing you to generate your box as polylines. And so as we increase these values, you can see that the divisions of our box increase accordingly while giving us the appropriate number of new polygonal faces along each side. And so that's what's happening at the axis division parameter. If we come back up to primitive type, the NURBS and Bezier options allow you to generate your box out of curves, as well as control the order of your surface vertices for each of the three axes, X, Y, and Z. And so if we turn on the points visualizer, you can see that we have some points in the middle that are serving as guides for our curves. And if we turn on the point numbers and we begin to play with the axis order, you can see that we're able to adjust the order of each of these surface verts on each axis independently. You're also able to control the number of axis divisions for your curves as well. All right, if we come back up to the primitive type, the last option is points, and this simply just generates the points of your box. 
no polylines, no polygons, just points wherever they would appear if your type were polygon mesh. All right, there you go. All right, the last option is the oriented bounding box option. And this is only available when you have something connected to the input of your box. So let's give ourselves a pig head. And if we plug this in and template the box while visualizing the pig head, you can see that regularly, whoop, there we go, regularly placing any geometry into the input of your box node will cause the box to become some kind of bounding object and adjust its size to match the bounds of the object that you've plugged in. You'll also note that the box doesn't actually orient itself to optimize its bounding. And we've got a lot of negative space here that could be removed if the box were simply rotated forward a bit. And so that's what this oriented bounding box option does. If you click it, you can see that the box updates its position to create the optimal bounding box for whatever is coming into its input. All right, that has been the box node. Thank you for watching.